a sterile type of procedure in the radiology department. Yes. Let's say you're already down and your blood still have a rip. Do you have to go back and re-scrub? No, I just peel it off and just have it ask, ask for a new pair. Or what I usually do is I keep those on and ask for a new set of gloves and I put them right over the ripped gloves. I've done that too. <clears throat> okay, this is the last page here, rules for surgical asepsis. Do we have any questions so far? Just on gloves. So mm -hmm. I've noticed a couple of them. Some have super loose gloves, some have super tight gloves. Mm -hmm. What is, is there a preference <clears throat> as far as how well the gloves Okay, so the fit? question is, some gloves are super loose and some are super tight. It is the preference of whoever is wearing them. Okay. Um, for, and it, it also, if you want a single glove or double glove, that's also up to you. That's your preference. Uh, for me, I like to have my fingers a little bit snug because I deal a lot with, with wires and I need to be able to feel the wires. Um, and you have doctors who have small hands but, and they like to wear big gloves don't know why it makes them feel big, but um, <laughs> but it's it's all doctor's preference. Okay. All doctor's preference. Yeah, it's up to you. There's no rule. There's no rule of thumb. Okay. So this is um, this is taken directly from your book, rules for surgical asepsis. So we're going to go through this one at a time. Again, this is just review. We've already talked about this in our discussion, but again, for simple review, number one, know which areas and objects are sterile and which are not being consciously aware of your environment. Remember sterile on sterile. Once you touch something that isn't sterile, you've now become contaminated. Number two, if the sterility of an object is questionable, it's if it's sterile. questionable, yes, not sterile. it's not sterile. Okay, remember that. That's probably gonna be the one of the most important things that you need to remember. If it's questionable, if you have any doubt, throw it out. Just consider it not sterile, throw it out. Number three, sterile objects and persons must be kept separate from those that are non-sterile. When any item that must be sterile becomes contaminated, the contamination must be remedied immediately. An example of that would be, <coughs> remember you are in an environment of sterile and non-sterile personnel. Sterile and non-sterile equipment. Let's just say I have a sterile tray open up. I'm a circulator and I happen to brush against the sterile field. Now, I can either pretend like nothing happened or what is your ethical responsibility? To announce it. Okay, mm -hmm. let them know that you've contaminated the field. When that happens, the whole tray does not have to be replaced. All we simply have to do is just put a towel, a sterile towel over the area that you contaminated. That's all it is. It's a simple remedy. I would rather have my tech or my doctor say, Psh, okay, than having to know two or three weeks later that the patient got ill. Okay? Again, you have an eth uh, ethical responsibility. And I've, I've done that many times, and it's not a big deal. They're like, oh, yeah, thanks for letting me know. Let me just cover it. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, one item that must be sterile becomes contaminated, okay, must be ready. Number five, when tabletops are to be used as areas for creating a sterile field, they must be cleaned and a sterile drape must be placed all over them. That's what we did earlier. Okay, we clean our table, put our tray on top of it. Personnel must be clothed in sterile gown and sterile gloves if they are to be considered sterile. Any sterile instruments or sterile area that is touched by a non-sterile object or a person is considered contaminated. Number eight, a contaminated area on a sterile field must be covered by a folded sterile towel or drape of double thickness. That's what we just did, did over here. If a sterile person's gown or gloves becomes contaminated, they must be changed. Number 10, a sterile field must be created just prior to use. Once a sterile field has been prepared, it must not be left unattended as it may become contaminated or presumed to be sterile. What we do in the department is we don't open up a tray until the patient enters the room. Some departments like to get everything ready. Okay, So they're setting up the room, they're all, all going to open up their tray, which is fine. So that way when the patient comes in, you're ready to go. The problem is, if you open up your tray and you leave the room, I don't know who's walked in and out. Okay? 
someone have may accidentally brush it against it. EVS, housekeeping, they come in once in a while. And so they may be looking at it like, oh, okay, and they start touching things, okay, <laughs> but you were not there to witness it, okay? So if you open up a tray, you never, ever leave it unattended. It must always be kept on watch, okay? Yes? How long can a, I mean, just hypothetically, can a tray be left uncovered until it gets affected by the microorganisms in the air? Well, for as long as possible. That's what we want, we want to try to keep that traffic as, as, as possible, okay. okay? And again, that goes back to making sure that it's not left unattended. Um, some places, what they do is they open up the tray, but then they put a sterile cover over it. Again, same same thing is we don't know if maybe the cover slipped off and somebody put it back on. Okay. Uh, what number are we on? Oh, so bad. I keep doing this. What number are we on? Number twelve. Okay. An unsterile person does not reach across a sterile field. Remember, you got circulators. So if I'm the one opening up a package and they need to grab it over me, I'm not going to hold it over the sterile field. I'm going to open it up to the side and the sterile individual needs to come and take it from me, okay? Number 13, a sterile field, okay, number 14, a sterile field ends at the level of the tabletop or at the waist of the sterile person's gown. Number 15, anything that drops below the tabletop or the sterile person's waistline is no longer sterile. Get rid of it, okay? The cuffs of the sterile gown are considered non-sterile because it collects moisture. They should always be covered by sterile gloves. The edges of the sterile wrapper are not considered sterile and must not touch a sterile object. Sterile drapes are placed by a sterile person. The sterile person places the drapes on the area closest to him first to protect his sterile gown. Again, keeping everything sterile on sterile. Uh, number 19, a sterile person must remain within the sterile area. He must not lean on tables or against the wall. If the sterile person must pass another, they must pass back to back. Okay, Nick, I'm gonna borrow you. Okay. In a surgical suite, or even in, in, uh, in IR, okay, if we're both scrubbed, scrubbed in, okay, and I need to get to the other side, I'm not gonna pass him like this. Why? Because his backside is not considered sterile. So if I need to pass him, we need to do this. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Got a roll. Yeah, it's kind of silly, but we have to do that. Okay. What number was that? Okay, number twenty. If one sterile person must pass another, they may. Have, okay, number twenty-one. The sterile person faces the sterile field and keeps sterile gloves above the waist in front of his chest, the sterile person must avoid touching any area of his body other than that that is considered sterile. Any sterile material or pack that becomes damp or wet, okay, remember what we said, we need to clean up that dampness immediately. Now it says here you must be discarded, but we usually don't do that, we just clean it up immediately. Okay. Um, Number 23, any objects that are wet with disinfectant solution and are to be placed on a sterile field must be placed on a folded sterile towel for the moisture to be absorbed. Um, a wet area in a sterile field must be covered with several thickness of sterile toweling. If you can't wipe it off, put um, some sterile towels on top of it. When pouring sterile solution, place the lid. Okay, we'll talk about 25 and 26 later on. We don't need to know 25 and 26 right now. Okay, do we, need, do we have any questions? What's going on next week? Exam. I asked you because you should know. I know what's going on. <laughs> okay, I know. Just to know if you guys know. Okay. Uh, review? Review. Yes.